Awesome. So I can go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Damuel Lawal. I am a first year master's student in the School of Public Health with a specialization in behavioral and community health. Um, so I am a graduate um, RD, so a resident director on FRAP Row, and I'm also um, the RD for sustainability on the Row and part of Green Chapter. Uh, so just wanting to thank you all for your commitments to leadership and sustainability. We're really excited that we have um, more chapters and ever being part of this program. So this is my first year in the role, and I'm excited that um, we, the organization will be, will be transitioning from being virtual to being in person, able to do more interactive things and bringing more creative and fun ideas um, to the program. Um, so we can just, um, Atandi, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. And then after that, we can, um, we, it will be great if each of you could introduce yourselves and talk about and talk about the chapter you're representing. Great, sounds good. Um, hi everyone, my name is Thunvi and I work over in the Office of Sustainability. Um, when I was in school, I majored in environmental studies. I graduated from UMBC in 2009. I did my master's in environmental science and policy at Hopkins. Um, I've been working at UMD since 2019 and prior to that I um, created and ran the Office of Sustainability at UMBC. Um, yeah, and I help with the Green Chapter Program, the Green Chapter Program, and our other, managing our other outreach programs and outreach team here at UMD. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so we're just going to have each of you kind of just share your name, your chapter, your major, and one part of sustainability that you are excited to engage in or learn more about this year. And um, I'm also going to put this in the chat just because, um, you know, sometimes the Wi-Fi can be, you know, not the best. Um, so I'm just going to put it in the chat. So name, wanna expect you are interested in. Okay. So I just put it in the chat and anyone can feel free to go ahead. Let me see. Uh, Julia, do you want to get started? And also, if you can include your um, um, pronouns, that will also be great. OK. Um, hi, my name is Julia. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I'm part of Alpha Epsilon Phi. Um, I, this is our first year with a sustainability position um, on our exec board. And so we're currently obviously trying to get um, certified right now. Um, and I'm a behavioral and community health major. I'm currently a sophomore and yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm also in behavioral and community health, so maybe I'll see you on School of Public Health. Uh, so you, do you wanna uh, choose someone to go next? So everyone will hopefully go anyway, but you can feel free to. Sure, uh, Annabelle. Okay, hi, I'm sorry if it's loud, the air conditioning in here is like really loud. Um, I'm Gamma Phi, sustainability chair. Um, I'm a senior. I, um, let's see, major, um, I'm supply chain management and environmental science and policy. So a little bit of business, a little bit of environmental science. Um, <laughs> and then one aspect of sustainability I'm excited about, um, I, I don't know if this exactly counts, but uh, last year we did like a really fun thrift shop event like behind our house. So we all got donations from like a bunch of people in the chapter and then sold them to like people in and outside of the chapter, like, people just walking by and stuff. So that was really fun. And like we donated like we made about five hundred dollars and we donated it to like our philanthropy. So that was like pretty fun. So I think we're, we're planning on doing it again. So I'm excited for that. Um, and I'll pass it to Audrey. Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm a junior environmental science and policy major, and I'm Delta Phi Epsilon sustainability chair. Something I'm really excited about is I was sustainability chair last semester, but we didn't get to do a lot of in-person events. And it's funny you mentioned the thrift stop shop. So part of our, uh, our fundraising for our philanthropy to CF foundation, a girl in our chapter brought up the idea of doing a thrift shop. So it's actually next weekend if anyone wants to come out in front of the Deef house, because and then they brought me into it because they thought it would be nice to make it a sustainability event too, which I'm really excited about. We have a lot of clothes. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing with us. Did you wanna pass it to anyone? I think 
Ryan, I think you're last, right? Okay, yeah. just before I go, just apologies. So um, we're having our fire drills on the road this week. I don't know if some of you live on the road, but just in case I've been hearing some sirens. So I'm just gonna put myself on mute. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm Brian. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm representing the Alpha Tau Omega chapter, and um, I'm an environmental science and policy major with a concentration in environmental agriculture. Um, something I'm interested in engaging and learning about with sustainability is um, I actually did think of the thrift store idea too. I, I thought that might be a cool thing to bring uh, to sustainable UMD, but um, also I was thinking maybe sort of a old town base, like locally grown food, something along the lines of that could, could be put in the works. And I think people would enjoy that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It seems like everyone has some so it seems like there might be some room for some collaboration on some thrifting ideas in the future um, or something, even if, um, yeah, so that seems, that's great that you all already have some ideas. Um, so I think everyone has gone. Uh, so next we are just going to um, go uh, share a quick video, sustainability video we have. So I'm just gonna pull it up and then share my screen. So this is going to be this focus about sustainability at UMD. So it seems like most of you have backgrounds in environmental um, health and policy. So you already have some idea, but this will just be a short clip. So let's see. Um, your chapter has. Oh, we said someone's in the waiting room. Hmm. Yeah. So we do like we're allowed to hold the position as co-chairs, and I guess her computer died or something, and she wanted me to let you know she's in the waiting room. If you could let her in. Oh, I don't see anyone in the waiting room. Uh, Dunby, I think since you're the host, she you, is. Need to let, you will be able to let her in now. She in? Okay, okay, great. So I'm just going to share my screen. Innovative natural solutions that protect the university. Okay. What's the table? Oh, I can't share the, um, Dunby, I can't share the video because I'm not the host anymore. <laughs> You mind sharing it? Oh, I think the volume, I, I think you have to share your volume as well. So if you click share screen, I think you can share your um, volume or audio, sorry. Oh yeah, there's a checkbox for sure sound. Okay, let me try that again. <laughs> Thank you. At the University of Maryland, students, faculty, and staff are creating solutions to the world's most vexing problems. The world's facing a lot of challenges in terms of climate change issues. The polar ice has melted a certain amount in the last 10 years. The changing patterns of heat absorption in the oceans Fossil fuels release CO2 into the atmosphere, which changes our ability to grow food, and we have worries about sea level rise. Many universities, including University of Maryland, are working on innovative new ways to address the challenges that we're facing. It's really nice to be at the University of Maryland because we have so many different areas of effort that are linked to world sustainability. We've installed solar panels on many of our parking garages, developing new ways of handling waste, the modernization of our on-campus power system. These are all real tangible activities that have been supported by the administration and demanded by the students. 
President Daryl Pines has announced an ambitious goal to make the University of Maryland a net carbon neutral campus by 2025 and to transition the entire university vehicle fleet to electric by 2035. All new buildings are currently carbon neutral and integrate green design features such as green roofs and solar panels. Interior spaces incorporate compost bins and motion detector lights. Campus buildings are also living labs for sustainability, where students can design and test new solutions, such as this patent-pending device that prevents unnecessary toilet flushing. My work here with the Maryland Energy Innovation Initiative has really reaffirmed for me the power of innovation, and that's where collaborations really come into play. We have super environmental programs, the public policy department, active players in the Smith School of Business, and then we have our technology department, science and engineering, and all those people exist here at University of Maryland. We're creating innovative natural solutions that protect the environment while serving our campus. Nutrient-rich substrates are now used on area rooftop farms. Sphagnum moss is a part of the pool filtration system in the Epley Recreation Center, reducing reliance on pool chemicals and saving water. And we have a sustainable farm in Upper Marlboro and growing spaces around campus. Some of the produce from these ventures is served in campus dining halls sold at the campus farmer's market, or donated to community members in need. We try to be a steward of natural resources within our watershed. To that end, water draining across campus is measured and monitored by strategically placed stormwater sensors and controls before flowing into the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Sustainability is part of who we are. That's why there are nearly 50 degree programs that prepare students to work on environmental issues. For faculty and staff, there are numerous programs they can participate in while reducing their environmental footprint. The University of Maryland campus is so beautiful. So as I think about climate and environment and sustainability, I'm just inspired by the beauty of the world around me and highly motivated and always optimistic that we're gonna be able to preserve this beauty and this system for our future generations. Do we have any thoughts or comments? Was there anything new that anyone learned learned from the video? Um, yeah, I'm actually, I lifeguard at Epley and I never knew that they use moss to filter the pool. So that's cool. That's awesome. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot going on, but um, more of the, the bigger initiatives I've seen, like everyone knows about the trash cans, you know, about the water bottles. I mean, the water, I don't even know what it's called. Water, the special water fountains that counts how many people use them. So it's interesting because I feel like at this point, it's been more than like, I don't know if they, they start over again because I keep seeing this one in McKeldin, the first floor that's at 100,000. I was like, it's been a long time since it's been there. It's definitely been more than that so there's a lot of cool things going on and hopefully through this program you all get to learn a little bit more um so now we're just gonna if there's no other questions gonna just talk a little bit more about the certification process um so we're just gonna do like an, a general overview of it and then um when we have the chapter meetings um we'll go into it in more like detail um and just kind of share like what the website looks like um, so the website pretty much goes over the different steps. So just give me a second and pull it up. Um, okay, so I'm just going to share my, well, I don't think I can share my screen. So send me my share your screen. I know why the settings are like this. I think it'll be, actually might be better if we switch because you have to like click or I, I think we can still. Um, sorry, are you saying you'd like me to cover this section? Um, I think I can I can cover it if you just click this first step. Okay. Okay, so this is more like talking about first of all the expectations of sustainable uh, sustainability chairs. Um, so some of you this might be your second year in the position, so you're pretty familiar with it. 
Um, so this website is public and accessible, but generally um, you will be our key contact between um, the, our, the Office of Sustainability and your chapter to making sure that you're on track and you learn about the process. And then also be the lead person from your chapter um, responsible for planning and promoting the events in your chapter. So talking to um, everyone, talking with your president and the exec board um, of your chapter about what's going on and sharing the information with the rest of your chapter. Um, and discussing like um, your goals and proof. So we'll be checking in on you all because we know there's things in the semester um, that can, you know, um, as we're, we're getting deeper into the semester, midterms are just around the corner. So just we'll be reaching out to you and we'll be tracking and just uh, reach out to you to let you know, like, hey, this is where you all are in the progress and be giving updates. So we'll have an email with um, probably like a biweekly email with just like some opportunities in the community. So this is also an opportunity for you all to like gain professional uh, development opportunity um, experience and opportunities. Uh, so we'll be so you will be seeing um, some emails from me, but um, it should be biweekly soon. Um, okay, and then the next so one of the most important parts is every um, people in your chapter signing up for the green turf to be a green turf. Um, so as part of the certification process, 30% uh, of the members in your chapter must be committed and certified as a green turf. So that's the second um, step in the process. Um, so these are the three, like um, the three steps. So committing, so sign, first of all, signing up, um, then taking their action as a green turf so they can sign up here. So the website makes everything pretty clear that the process and is in an orderly fashion. Um, so you, your chapter members can learn more and choose options that uh, work best for them, or you know, maybe doing some, maybe some of these things they already do. We know we have a lot of bikers on campus. Most people get they use um, uh, recycle, and they can go further from what they're already doing. Um, so the, this website will help track their progress um, and let them know what steps they need to take as an individual from the chapter. Um, so we will be monitoring like how many people from your chapter get certified. Um, and then once you, we have over 30% um, certified, then we'll have move on to the third step. So I think, okay, so the third step is in the, in the movement is, sorry, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, because I'm not, <laughs> yeah. This is, this is Zoom, it's fine, it's perfect, it's fine. <laughs> You have to do what you need to do. Uh, okay, so the third step is taking actions. So as part of um, taking actions in your chapter, um, so we would prefer it to be, so I, I know we reached out to some of you about your dates. So some people's dates had already passed. So we will be available after October 14th. Um, and we'll be reaching out to you like, hey, this is the date you listed and just want to confirm that this date still works for you. And if it doesn't work, we'll work um, to figure out a different date for you. And we would hope to get all the presentations finalized by November. So you have time to plan events um, after the break. Um, so these are some of the ideas. I know a lot of you already started talking about some of the things you're interested in, like the thrift shop ideas. Um, we also had know like some people are interested in um, painting the recycling bins and trash cans. And we there are some opportunities on campus. Like I think one of you mentioned um, planting flowers or growing produce. So there are also opportunities about that. So those are just things we would need to just know in advance so that we can um, reach out to the campus partners that are involved and get uh, working on it. So we might have to work with whether it's the, um, the, the um, individuals in charge of the gardens to let them know like, hey, this chapter wants to volunteer or adopt a garden and get you connected with them. Or if it's the painting, we have to order paint, we have to talk with facilities management. So there's a lot of collaboration that goes into it. So just um, keeping, letting us know what you have in mind ahead of time. And Thunvi already has some examples up. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can um, send a follow up email to all the chairs, um, providing them with the link to um, the website, the link to get Green Office certified, um, and um, a link to review what previous chapters have done. 
Yes, I think this is, um, these are kind of, it kind of reminds me of like a social media post, but just giving you highlights of what they did and, you know, having fun doing it and, you know, putting thought into what you have going on. Um, so we can definitely share that presentation with all of you. Um, yeah, so we'll be reaching out with your date. If your date doesn't work, we'll work for you to find an alternative date, hopefully sometime before November. Did anybody have any questions about that or any concerns? About I, the um, yeah, I emailed my president wanted or to, originally told me that the 11th at 615 was good, but she asked to move back the time. Um, I'm not sure if you already have chapters for the 11th. So we do have a few chapters for the 11th. I think you said that you had like a presenter that was coming in, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so I was going to respond. Okay, so we can work with you on that. So either if we, because we have some other um, staff members, um, some interns that can help with some of the presentation. So if that date doesn't work, then we can work with you to figure out a different date. Um, if you already have something going on, um, I can email you with some options. So we'll be following up with you, with you all, um, and make sure that we have a date that works for you and your chapter. Awesome, thank you. No problem. Um, let's see what we have. So we've kind of talked about responsibilities and we've talked about the expectations. Um, any other questions before we move on to our next step? Nope, okay. So we are going to be um, just have you all in breakout rooms. So we, only, we have about seven people. So I guess we might just have to have three in one room, four in the other to just kind of talk um, a little bit more in smaller groups. Um, so in each group, you can assign a note taker. And um, I think some of you trying to copy paste in the chat, like what we're going to be discussing. So just talking about what are some of the sustainability related professional development, learning opportunities you're interested in participating in, and how do you feel um, that the Department of uh, Fraternity and Sorority Life can help improve sustainability offices as a team for you, as, um, for your chapters, um, for us as the team of chairs and staff. So just thinking about what our goals are for this year, how can we be more innovative, especially since we're on campus now and not virtual. So I think then we would have to put us in the breakout rooms. Sounds good, I will do that. Um, yeah, so in we, terms. Sorry, I was just gonna say when we come back, we can just discuss our answers and what we discussed as a group, sorry, go ahead. Perfect. Um, the button to put people into breakout rooms is not showing up on my screen. Uh, let me see what can we do. Oh, it says I'm the host now. Did you switch it? Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can do this. Um, while Dami is working on that, I um Feel free to go to the Green Turf website and get familiar with the process because we do want to see 30% um, um, certification in the Green Turf, Green Turf program for chapters who um, qualify to achieve Green Chapter certification. Um, so feel free to get familiar with that and send that link out to the members of your chapter. Um, and when you do your four actions as a chapter. There is a Google Drive folder for all of the sustainability chairs, and we ask that you document each of the chapter-wide actions through photos or screen screenshots or something like that, and then submit your documentation of each of the actions you took into that Google Drive um, folder. Sorry, I'm not sure why. It's, I don't know if it's my Turpmill account. It's not allowing it. Um, or 
otherwise we can just discuss it as a bigger group since we do have a smaller group today we don't have to, definitely don't have 25 people right now so we can discuss discuss it as a bigger group too um let's see so just because this is a limited account how about we just go ahead and discuss it as a group then um just the answer to the second question i thought Last year, it was really nice, the dumps, the recycling bin painting, because it was kind of, four actions in a semester is kind of quick, so it was kind of nice to have one that was um, a little bit more unified with the other chapters, and we had a little bit of help, like we got to talk to other chapters while doing it, and it was just a fun project, so stuff like that, that's kind of pre-organized can be fun. Okay, so like a lot of collaboration. Okay, you got to meet other people and be outside, especially I'm sure there weren't that many opportunities for that last year. Um, anyone else also want to share or have any ideas? Um, yeah, can, can you guys hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, um, I think it's really important that you stress uh, the why it matters for them because uh, all of us here obviously care about the environment and sustainability, but your average person might not think much of it when they go throughout their day. So to make sure like you really put the facts like in front of their face so they know why buying a thrifted shirt is so important because a normal person might just buy the shirt because they like it, but not really realize what exactly that is doing for the environment. That is a great point. I, I definitely think um, um, there is a lot of room to go beyond just like recycling and things a lot most people are aware about now and uh, thinking about how can we have education in our events as well. So maybe thinking, maybe that's something to think about when you all are flyering as well and talking in your chapter meetings as well and kind of like um, having that educator role in your chapter to let them know about it and other people that might come to your fair you might have your friends that are outside the chapter come to your events and talking to them about that as well so i think that's a great idea um did anyone have anything about what do you so um how many of you currently live on the row or the graham character or okay julia do you think there's any initiatives that the department can take or the Office of Sustainability can take to like make um, the actual houses more sustainable? Yeah, that was definitely the route that I was initially thinking of going in um, with my chapter because just even just within the house, there's so many things that we could be doing that could be more sustainable. Um, for one, I'm pretty sure that all the sorority and fraternity houses just started partnering with uh, College Fresh, which is like our dining um, company. I think that everyone is on that now, but, uh, and I'm not sure how much they have to do with food waste and, and that kind of management, but we, I know my house wastes a lot of food. Um, we, we have compostable dishes, but um, that's not the most sustainable option. And um, we don't have that many recycling cans. There's just like a lot of work to be done just like within the houses alone. That's a great point to not only talk about the department too and also like um, for some things in a house it might be like your house core that's making those, uh, making certain purchases decisions. So that's also something that you all can talk to them about, about um, the needs in the house as well. And that's a good, uh, good idea for us, I know. In, I am in Sigma Chi, so we do have recycling in the basement and we have recycling upstairs and then we have the huge recycling dumpster in the back and we are working um, about composting. So our house has uh, go grillings and we have compost. Do you all have a composting trash can? Okay, so I think Dunby, you were going to talk about the composting. Oh, we're going to, yeah, we're actually going to be talking about composting once we're having this discussion and talk about it in more detail. Um, so that's definitely like something that's really important because um, there is a lot of wastage that goes on. And even perhaps like in Stamp and other places um, where we might eat or your chapters might have events. Um, thank you for sharing, Julia. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts or ideas?
Okay, in terms of like professional development, like, is there any particular things that you feel like, you know, this role can help you get us? So some ideas you want us to think about that we can share with you. So part of our newsletters, we um, we do want to be able to share like ideas, maybe like a free conference in DC related to sustainability that you could attend, or something virtual or something maybe like, for example, there's all free, uh, or even something that just being in nature too, like there's free yoga, at the wharf or that is something that your chapter can do for fun be in nature and um maybe be away from the campus and just you know be so not only like how can we be outside more how can we maybe that can for some people that might help them value sustainability that time you spend outdoors and really be like wow this could be gone or like this you know if, if we you know get that that can be like a, a, a reaching point for some people um, so if there's and nothing else, you can um, keep in mind that you can always feel free to email us um, if you have any additional thoughts that come, um, come to mind later on. And I'll just pass it off to Thunvi to talk more about composting. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I think another thing that a lot of chapters were doing to get outdoors is doing community service projects with local farms or local parks. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunities in that space as well um, to earn um, chapter-wide actions toward certification. Um, so composting. Um, the university does offer compost collection and compost bins and compost posters to put above your compost bins. There have been issues in the past with, um, they're like these green toters that look like a trash can, but it's green with a lid that um, it's placed outdoors. And some people don't pay close attention. <laughs> so it's important that we um, prevent contamination of what ends up in our compost bins to ensure that it actually can um, be put to productive use to turn it into, turn it into um, fertile soil. So we do have information on the sustainability website that outlines what you can and cannot compost. So I can walk through that quickly. Um, so there is a map of compost collections, but I just um, put together a form as well. So you can request compost bins from your building. You can also request a rain barrel to collect water from your roof and to um, collect that rainwater to reuse for irrigation um, to help protect our watershed. Um, but in terms of compost, there are some materials that look like plastic that are actually compostable in our campus cafes like compostable straws, compostable utensils, compostable cups that appear to be plastics. If you check the fine print, you can double check and, and be super sure that you're not putting non-compostable items into the compost. You can also print your own poster and um, we definitely encourage you to communicate to and educate um, the folks in your chapters about um, how to compost. In particular, if you are requesting a compost collection service and bin for your building. Um, so I can follow up, maybe um, send Demi the link to the form to request um, any of the three things. So the first thing being compost collection, a compost collection bin for your house if, if your chapter has a chapter house. Um, second being rain barrels, so a barrel to, to connect to your gutter to um, harvest rainwater for reuse. And then the third option being the dumpster painting. If your chapter wants to paint a mural on one of the recycling dumpsters on campus, we'll just try to collect all that information in one form and um, help coordinate those efforts. Awesome, yes, yeah, so I'll be emailing so that we're not filling out too many surveys um, and just collect all your information that way. Um, so I have been working, um, so, uh, hopefully we'll send that shortly um, and any other any other questions or in uh, communications we want to collect at once so we're not sending don't worry we're not going to be like spamming or anything like that <laughs> um, so do we so one thing I just want to remind you is that um, if you haven't filled out the survey I think most of you here have um, we just uh, would like you to fill it out so that we can have an idea of when your um, chapter would like to meet so um, Ruby, Ruby, I would be reaching out to you. I've reached, already reached out to some of you about your times, whether there's a conflict or we need to reschedule. Um, so I can share the link in the chat for those of you who might have not been able to um, fill it out yet. Um, 
And then if there's any adjustments needed, if you could just let us know as soon as possible, for example, if your chapter meeting ends up being moved or anything like that, or, you know, um, for example, if something happens with the weather or like something, anything that might uh, prevent multiple people from coming or like most of the chapters from not coming, uh, you can just feel free to let us know. Um, does, do we have any other questions or anything? Is there anything else we can clarify about the process? Okay, I'm just gonna pull up the link to share with you all in the chat if anyone hasn't filled it out yet. So kind of just streamlined it so it's a bit shorter now. And it should be working. I know we had an issue before about not being able to sign up for your UMD email, then being able to sign up. So you, everyone should be able to sign up with the link now. So apologize for the tech issues. <laughs> yeah, I think what we'll probably be doing is um, myself, Dami, and our various outreach interns um, we'll take a look at when your weekly chapter meeting is and probably email you and suggest the time that works for us to come in and do a presentation during your weekly chapter meeting. Um, but we'll be in touch via email with each of you to follow up and confirm one specific date. Yes, and if you look at it, it will probably just, the email will just be like your chapter uh, green term. So it'll be pretty clear about what it's about. Okay, so I just had the link in the chat. So if there's no other question, that's pretty much um, all we wanted to go over with. We will be talking um, about the process in more detail um, when we are at your chapter. Uh, so please look out for our emails. Um, we will be sending a newsletter. And if there's any questions that come up, you can feel free to reach out, email us and let us know. Um, uh, Denby, do you have anything else to add before we wrap up? Um, something else I can provide to you to include in the email to everyone is different volunteer opportunities that relate to sustainability um, and information on how to get involved and how to get in contact with um, some various local opportunities. Um, we also have information on the website about different like DIY upcycling activities. So when I was um, going through some of the slides showing what chapters did last year, some of them were doing DIY upcycling. So if you're looking to do a project like that, we do have some um, bulk materials available um, should you need them. So you can be in touch with us to request those as well. Okay, well, thank you so much everyone for joining us on a Thursday evening. We really <laughs> appreciate it. Um, and we hope we will be in touch with you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.